Oh my goodness! First solar eclipse to pass through North America in seven years, and the next one will not be seen from the contiguous U.S. until August 23rd, 2044, according to NASA. According to NASA, happy eclipse day, Rhett. It's the contiguous. Cont <laughs> Deciduous? Coniferous. Oh, I like coniferous. Uh, amphibious? That Ambidextrous? Thing? No. Throws me off. Don't like lefties. Look who's back in Buffalo. Look who's back. Doesn't like lefties still. Back from his vacation. Feeling great. I don't know if I'm feeling great. I've got a rib out in my back. I've got an ear I can't hear out of. Eh. The rib eight. sucks because it's just, it's kind of this lingering pain that doesn't, it doesn't go away until it's gone. And then uh, the ear thing, it's just like half your head's in a fish tank. It doesn't yeah. feel right. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. You're just a little bit off. Doesn't Not hurt. Ideal. But. And if that didn't make matters more uh, difficult, you've already got to deal with clouds potentially ruining Eclipse Day in uh, Western New York. Let's have a look. Let's go live to the ret cam. Ooh, it looks overcast-ish. That is oh, boy. yesterday when we got back Saturday, clearest of blue skies. <laughs> yesterday, stunning blue skies. Yeah. Today, typical buffalo. Yeah. Gray, gray, gray. Gray, gray, gray. Uh, you know how you know America is is the entrepreneur's country. You, you want to make some dough? You got to find a trend, jump on it. People are making t-shirts. They're excited about this. I'm sure people are selling these eclipse sunglasses. They're probably not even real eclipse sunglasses. They're just you know, hotels are filled up, restaurants are backed up, eclipse special. Uh, the craze, the the fever has caught you. I'm sure. I actually should get. My, hang on, I got to get my glasses on, maybe. Do you have an eclipse glass? Do you have glasses for the eclipse? Got glasses. Hang on, I'll text someone. Yeah, because someone made a T-shirt, Jack. I don't know if because uh, Buffalo's got a long-standing history of. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Wide right, no goal, cloudy eclipse. Why can't we have nice things? I honestly thought it this morning. I'm because yesterday and the day before, I'm like, well, this is this is Buffalo. Yeah, <laughs> we're not allowed to win. Yeah. <laughs> have everything lined up very unique spot on the on the map mm -hmm. at the whole the three and a half minutes of blacked out oh yeah so, mm. it's uh mm -hmm. not, not that one. but the good news is if you're running a restaurant or hotel the people will still be there in buffalo True. they're just not gonna have anything to look at and and the other good news for me personally i really don't give a shit Yes, you have not. Uh, there's many things where you have been, you've caught the fever. This is not one, I don't get the sense. You would have been happy to stay in Florida and miss this, I think. I believe uh, I've never, yeah. It, it, although I was, I was thinking when I was down in Florida and had a few drinks that I should get an eclipse tattoo. Oh, really? Just a black circle. <laughs> <laughs> I was... Wonder what that would look like. I mean, wouldn't that be great? Dot. How good would that be? How big do you want it to be? Is it a period? Is it, uh, like, is what it a planet? The, people would be like, "What in the f is that?" What do you mean? <laughs> We're <laughs> like, "Well, I did live in Buffalo in the eclipse. How was it? I was in Florida vacationing. I got this tattoo in honor of it." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How's the family? The boys enjoyed the ocean. Everyone survived the crocodiles and. Uh, Bender, snakes of florida just, you know what i was gonna have the conversation off air but yeah here we are i'm going south just return to north you're going back how long no like i'm gonna buy a house there and just move. <laughs> you're moving are you bringing your wife and children with you i don't care yeah okay that's that's irrelevant the day we mm. left Saturday. To you, it, it might be irrelevant. I think to them, it's quite relevant. We baby these people for too long. <laughs> they got to figure shit out for themselves here. We got, you know what? When things get quiet and the hockey and the sports slow down, I, I think we got to have some, I don't know what to call it, but like life instruction programming that we can provide for, for people out there. We're babying these. Figure it out. So explain to me how uh, you moving south will will curb this babying of your no, wife I, and children. It might not curb their babying, but if they don't come along, they're going to have to deal with some stuff. Like if, if, <laughs> if I, they don't I'm, come along, if I get a one bedroom apartment, 
<laughs> yeah, this is my place, guys. Didn't you? Uh, you got to know a real estate agent if you They're like. Could that that could help. If I'd known you were coming, we could have got a, We could have asked for a deal. <laughs> could have got a, a two or a three, even a four bedroom home. Yeah. So are you going to Fort Lauderdale? Where are you going? And you know what else? No, Fort Lauderdale is too busy. I want to go somewhere. We're going to have a fire on the beach. Okay. And where is that? I don't know yet, but we'll find it. <laughs> okay. We can find it. Yeah. Did you get and to so the... Uh, the, the way I'll deal with the children, just shuffle them off to those boarding schools. There's all kinds. Oh, there's in there America. Is, yeah. All kinds of boarding yeah. schools. They go home for a week at a time. It's like that easy. And if only your kids had an athletic endeavor of sorts, then you could enroll them in that sort of curriculum and play that sport at said boarding school. Listen, kids, off you go. Pickleball, it's huge. Go play. It's huge. Pickleball scullies just falling out of the sky like eclipses. Now, so my girl Jeannie won some pickleball event. Really? Is she playing pickleball? She's I'm in love it. again. That's amazing. Yes. She's nailing it. Yep. Ah, oh, Jeannie. She's the one cat. that got away, Rhett. I mean, really true. think about my life. I can't believe it happened. <laughs> How was your weekend, Pinder? Did you do anything? Skied on Saturday. It was uh, very nice. Spring skiing has been awesome. It was a shitty ski year for most people because they don't realize spring is the best. Don't ski when it's cold and dark. Ski when you it's warm and there's lots of snow and it's beautiful and there's long sunny days and the roads are dry the whole way. Come on. You people. go to Florida when it's cold and dark and snowy. And dry. That's see. Now you're talking. Yes. Back for spring. Love it. Uh, it was good. We had not skied all year until Easter weekend. We've now skied three of the last eight days. Perfect. Yeah. Keep it a couple up. more. We've hit the quota. Keep it up. Uh, Flames and Oilers did play a game on the weekend, I'm told. It was on. I thought I was it was entertaining. Watching. They worked hard. And the Oilers did what they, you thought they'd do, which is win by two. And for the Calgary Flames, that's probably just perfect. Work hard, try a kid at center ice, improve your, your fans were in, the, the fans were happy. Half of them were from Edmonton, but they were happy. The Edmonton fans certainly were happy. Uh, I saw someone in the comments earlier saying they were getting chirped at the game because they had a Ginla jersey. That's inappropriate. Respect your elders. Yeah, um, that sounds a lot. You should have called Iggy to come down tune that guy in. Yeah. We need some Iggy around here. Lots I had some nephews at the game, one in an Oilers jersey, one in a Flames jersey. Got a T-shirt from Harvey. Was absolutely ecstatic. Hell of a time. First I'm, I'm okay with Harv. I don't know about this nephew of yours wearing Oilers silks. What kind yeah, of... He's a weird kid. He's not going to succeed in life. Dropped as a child? What happened? Yeah. He's the first child trying to get attention, right? Yeah, yeah, I guess that's right. Mm -hmm. uh, let's get to our opening thoughts. It is for McLeod Law. Shane King. What statement thoughts? Do I keep saying thoughts? Yes. yes. What the hell's going on? I don't know. I crack a beer here. What are Be we lawyerly. All right, then. If Can't you're going to. It's late in the day. I start to mess up the race. If you're going <laughs> to. Oh, I could have arrived. Oh, I could have arrived, oh. Jack. Oh, if everybody's doing it. Oh my God, they uh, they travel well. Look at that. Actually, this one might not have traveled well. Actually, that one's a little dinged up. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna blame you, not the origin folks, for that. Or your neighbor Rob Ray was just elbow dropping those while yes. you were in Florida. Yeah. Mm. Let's care. get back to our opening statements from McLeod Law. Shane King's a partner in the litigation and dispute resolution group. They specialize in areas like employee rights. You've been laid off or terminated. It's not easy. In fact, that can be very hard. Shane can review your situation and make sure you've been treated fairly and as the law requires using a practical approach and plain language. No legal mumbo jumbo. Uh, it was the final battle of Alberta. They wore Blasty. It was the first battle of Alberta. They did not wear the outdoor jerseys. Connor Zeri was at center. Uh, they have some dinged up D-men. What else can I tell you? Andrew Mangiapane still, we're waiting. It's not there yet. And Jacob Markstrom finally played against the Oilers. It's been a long time. They've been, the Oilers fans say they've been hiding him. But uh, judging from how he played, there's no need to hide Jacob Markstrom for the Oilers. He was quite good on Saturday. Jacob can play in the NHL, I think. It's, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I think uh, last year he wasn't very good at hockey. And in that series, the whole team was dog shit. But the Oilers did indeed not 
break Jacob Markstrom, uh, contrary to popular opinion. Or they would have had more than three goals past him on the numerous scoring chances they amassed on the night. Um, let's actually get to my real statement about uh, the, the loss to the Oilers on the weekend. Let's bring up our new favorite bookmarked website, Rhett. Uh, Tankathon Draft Lottery Simulator. And let's, yes. uh, let's go for a spin and click the Sim Lottery button. We're simulating the draft lottery, Rhett. We're going to see a bunch of logos spin around. I'm thinking Ducks just got Celebrini. Flames stay at eight. Okay. Let's try it again, Jack. You don't need to reset. You just press the sim lottery again, but that's fine. I think, at least. Oh, but look at get that. Out of here. What the hell? Look at that. That's brutal. And the Flames drop one to ninth. Jack, yeah. you can't end on that note. Get out of here. Montreal. San Jose, Chicago, Flames stay at eight. That's three spins. We, I mean, we could. It's a fun game. Yeah. Is it? It's funner when the Flames move up into the top two. One more. One more. All right, sure. Come on, Flames. Ah, oh, Ottawa. Boo. Yuck. What's uh? Go back to that. What do, What have you been shopping for on the old work computer here, Jack? Let's look at the look at the ads that have been custom built. <laughs> go put it back up. <laughs> Put it back up. The what are you doing? Ones. Look at Whoa. this. Yes. Oh, little nighty for Jack. Wow. Holy. Yeah, Jack. Is that a teddy? What do we call that? What's? <laughs> hey, look. Jack, has, sometimes he's busy. He's got to get some stuff ordered to the house before he leaves home. Whatever you need to do, buddy. You feel free to use our internet. It's a flat rate. We're not going to bill you extra for doing your shopping, okay? <laughs> By the way, I j if you have any photos to compare, I'd like to see, okay, this is what they said it looked like on the website, and this is what it actually, you want to make sure it's consistent. Rhett would like to make sure there's... I'll Yeah, I'll do the visual He can do that, please. Judging. Um, There are six games left, and I'm very excited about where the Flames are in the upside down standings, they remain at eighth, but they're suddenly a lot closer to sixth. Arizona's gone on a nice little run. The challenge, Rhett, is that they've got two San Jose's, one Anaheim, and a Coyote. Remaining. I'm not intimidated by that at all. How's the record against these teams over the last year? Or so? Um, I have two words: horse shit. That's how the record has been against the worst teams yeah. in the league. They've been really, really bad. Don't let us down now, Flames. So they've got one loss against San Jose. They've gone win-win against Arizona. The Coyotes have actually done a number on because they were the Mullet Arena game we were at, and then they were back in Calgary to start that next homestand. They won both of those. They've split with the Ducks, but recently just lost to the Ducks. And again, the Ducks actually look pretty decent. They've split with the Kings, who they'll face on Thursday. And they've won the first, but lost the last two against the Canucks. That's the only other game on the schedule. I'm predicting two wins. You go two and four. I think you got a good shot at sixth or seventh overall. That's you're not going to lose them all. I just can't see that happening. But uh, I think that it's possible that it's maybe just two wins. One yeah. would be nice, but I think there's two wins in there. But I'm okay. and, and split with San Jose, and then you 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 you, make, you you slip on a banana peel and win one more. There 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 you go. <laughs> oh, <laughs> look at this. New man on town. Rhett is uh, modeling his Eclipse sunglasses. Oh, that's a perfect angle. Look at that. <laughs> I, you can't see a damn thing. Yeah, you got to overcast. Not going to. Not going to be good. Yeah. What? Uh, they got the 30 goals for Sharon Govich. Congrats to Igor. That's a full trade win for Craig Conroy in the Toffoli swap, correct? Is he a third rounder? So. Plus that guy Igor. A player. Plays the middle, moving back to the wing. Uh, 30, that's man. Good. That's, that's not nothing. Woo. And then, what? Mackenzie Weger still one away from 20. One away and from 20. Col Coleman? One away from 30. Huberto's just absolutely torched the league the second half of the year to get. He's got to maybe catch last year's total of the largest drop in NHL history. He was points terrible from 115. on Saturday night. Oh, boy. Yeah. Didn't like his game. 
Well, actually, maybe I did. You know what? I see, I see where your head's at. He understands that maybe if this team's going to turn things around, yeah, maybe they need to get a better player. Yeah, maybe he's the most committed to this process. Because he's got Who's the longest, he's he's the leader with the most dough in this. The most he's got the most skin in the game. He really does. He's here the longest. <laughs> he knows how to what he needs. He and Uyghur are here for the next seven years. No one else in the organization has that kind of job security. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no one else is that committed. That's right. That's why he was so horseshit the first half of the year. First two months, brutal. Figure he it knew. out. He Pink knew. He knew. Yeah, two months, three months. He had one point in December. Holy fuck. Mm. Oh. I, I thought know. the effort was fine again. Effort's they been played. totally fine. Yeah. yeah. And look, I, I think everyone has this fear about a team and losing culture and the stretch and meaningless games and a team that's not going to make the playoffs. They've worked hard. Ryan Huska, again, deserves another feather in his cap, which now has many feathers in it for all his wow. achievements this yeah. year. Uh, they've worked hard. They, they have not laid many eggs this season. There's been one or two against Chicago, one against San Jose. Didn't love Anaheim last week, but generally speaking, they've come to work every night. And that was not something we could say about this club last year at all. No, last year was the exact opposite. It was like, mm -hmm. could you show up and try? Because if you did, you you might make it. But this yeah. year, effort's good. It was actually, I thought the game was entertaining. I've got no issues with the game. Yeah. Some of your key guys are playing well, like how Sharon Govich is going. I mean, yeah, Uyghurs getting chances. There's, yeah. Pospisil's going to Pospisil. Pospisil's No Pospisil. suspension there. It was nice to see. Um, we kept waiting and then there was no announcement. You're like, yeah, okay. So point of impact, clean hit looked worse than it was. Yeah. 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 Good. Uh, those are our opening statements for McLeod law. You know, Peter Klein at McLeod law is the personal injury guy, but he also is the go-to guy in Calgary for your disability insurance claim. If your long-term disability insurance company is refusing to pay insurance benefits to you get Peter. He'll uh, get you the disability benefits that you paid for and deserve. Never mind that peace of mind. You'll get back the peace of mind you paid for. Uh, Calgary people, community oriented, McLeod Law. Find out more at McLeod-Law.com or on social media at McLeod Law LLP. Okay. Uh, we've got Frank joining us in about three minutes, but before Ooh. we do that, Let's uh, hit up the old Wendy's Daily Face-Off Survivor Pool. Because, you know, Monday, it's a brand new week and another chance to win up. prizes and points on the Wendy's app, etc. cetera. Uh, Monday, Jack's going to pull it up. We're going to take a look at what we got for choices. Only two games in the NHL tonight. Can we embiggen that? That's a word, embiggen. I've just decided it is. Thank you for making it. So we've got Vegas in Vancouver tonight. They're a little dinged up. Questions in net. Logan Thompson got her to practice. Aiden Hill ain't right. Penguino, massive game. Jack, I'm sorry. How have we, we've almost got the half pass. We haven't mentioned the Penguins game tonight. In Toronto, huge game for the Penguins, who I don't know if you saw it on Saturday, Rhett, your travel day. We're up 4-1 on Tampa. Jack is texting me like crazy. Wagon, cup season, Sullivan back to earth. They've taken him back from the sun. Uh, very excited. They blew that 4-1 lead. Jack's losing his mind, and then they ended up netting the game winner with like seven minutes left in the third. They win 5-4 for Tampa. Poor Jack's on the roller coaster here. I, I When I got landed, I saw that they were up. I'm like, yeah. Jack's going to be excited. Yes. And then I got home and saw how close it was. I didn't... Uh, I watched some of the highlights. I'm happy. I'm I'm with Jack. I love I'm cheering too. Jack's team. Honestly, if we have to pick one of those five dopey teams, or two of them, in fact, to get in... Pittsburgh, for sure. Everyone wants to see Sid get in one more time with this group, or at least back in. They missed last year by, uh, well, can't say that. They missed by a very small amount last year. They lost to Chicago in the last They missed by year. a loss to Chicago in the Gross. last year. Gross. So you just have to pick one of these events to be correct, and then you'll survive to get to Tuesday, where you have another selection of items. I don't mind uh, the Vancouver win tonight. Vegas ain't quite right, not playing well, injuries in net, so I might lean that way today. There's some other options in there as well, including the Crosby half goal. Mm -hmm. Jack, give us your uh, Pittsburgh synopsis. How are the vibes? How was, how was Saturday's experience? Well, Saturday was a roller coaster, like you said. 4-1, 
And then I almost flew to Pittsburgh and egged Mike Sullivan's house. I was so freaking mad. <laughs> and then they pull it out. So all year they've lost those types of games too, where they've been winning. You yeah. saw it here in Calgary. And then they blow just it. blow it and they lose. The season's over. But they they come through. I'm feeling good tonight. Toronto, it's a, it's a must win against Toronto. Crosby, over half a goal. Big Let's stage. Love. Oh, he's, he's locking it in. Click continue. Lock it in. Uh, the only thing sweeter than the taste of victory is starting your day with the new Cinnabon pull apart from Wendy's. But there's no reason you can't have both now that Wendy's and Daily Face Off Fantasy are giving you a chance to win weekly prizes all season long. And hey, if you make a few wrong picks, at least you know you can always head to Wendy's right now for that $5 Cinnabon pull apart and a small coffee. That a great choice. Uh, again, go to the dailyfaceoff.com website, top right corner, Wendy's Daily Survivor pool for more information there uh how many how many people have you got at your house like you've rented out some rooms for the eclipse here uh you, you, your kids are selling lemonade and hamburgers on the streets it's just the, the enthusiasm for the eclipse has uh, upon awakening mm -hmm. has plummeted greatly <laughs> it's petering out eh? <laughs> and, and wow well, i don't know i drove around this morning i guess it's nowhere close to I wonder what the highways are like. Like it is apparently a big deal, as you yeah. said. Like, but I don't know. It's gonna be. Are people problem. just needing things to get excited about, or do we have this many like closeted astronomy nerds out there, like that really always loved the stars and eclipses and planetary this and that? I can't. Like, let's be honest. If this was happening over uh, uh, Tokyo, Japan, yes, I'm not traveling to check no. it out. No, you're the, not. The fact that it's here, I was like, oh, well, I guess cool to see. Yeah. Never in my life will I, that was my only upside was that I happened to be okay. in a location that was supposed to have a cool, and yet we won't see it at all. But it would kind of be like if WrestleMania came to your city and then that way you'd get caught up in it potentially, which uh, we're expecting for our pal Frank's going to join us at any moment here. We'll, we'll get an update from him. Um, all right. So you're heading back South. This is, this is a long-term medium term or short term thing. Well, it's, it's a forever thing. Cause that's how I live. Right. That I is correct. Yeah. Split decisions and I don't make short term. Like, Cause uh, you've also told us you're coming home at some point here, right? Oh yeah. 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 Like, you know, we've got the, the playoff draft is a week from Friday. I'm going to be there. Okay. So red is going to be back for the playoff draft, Jack, which is important. There's a few teams remaining. We are less than two weeks out. The regular season ends on Thursday, the 18th of April. On Friday, the 19th, you can join us at the Gray Eagle Resort and Casino for the second annual Barn Burner Playoff Draft. You know, at the real draft with the big tables and everyone comes to the podium and makes a selection. Same thing will happen on Friday, the 19th. We're going to open the doors at 6, have a few um, cleansing ales to make sure that our minds are nimble, Rhett and ready to select the best playoff players uh, for your respective teams. Tables of eight are $1,500, and you'll get a tax receipt from the great folks at Kidsport Calgary. If you want to attend, email eden at kidsportcalgary.ca to register your team. It was an absolute banger of a game, of an event, excuse me, last year. In fact, it was early in Jack's tenure here, and I remember him being absolutely dialed up at the gray eagle he was loving life he had two or three drinks in each hand it was quite impressive work if if crosby doesn't go first he'll be chucking drinks at whoever that's picked. right yeah <laughs> <laughs> they can't get this close and knock it in can they like it, would be, dis it would be disappointing and not dis it, it, disappointing for various reasons because like who who else like there's no one else that has any panache about getting in Village no, I'm kind of curious himself. about like Kane and Debrinket in Detroit, but not anywhere near these Penguins that we thought were dead that played the the very wonderful guest for the retirement night and blew a lead in the third period here for Iggy Jersey night. But uh, they're the most exciting team that we have left in the East that could potentially get in there. And yes, Jack will be lobbying for Crosby to go first overall at the Barnburner playoff draft on the 19th of April again. At the Grego Resort and Casino, brought to you by McLeod Law in support of Kidsport. Email Eden at kidsportcalgary.ca to lock in one of the final remaining teams for the second annual playoff draft. Let's get to our TELUS Insider Hotline. At TELUS, they're using world-leading technology to drive meaningful change 
transforming healthcare, making our food supply more sustainable, and reducing our environmental footprint and connecting Canadians in need. It's the most giving company in the world. Let's make the future friendly. You can learn more at telus.com slash gives back. It is the Insider Hotline, and there is Frank Saravalli from Philadelphia. Always sunny in Philadelphia, but uh, is it is it eclipsing today in, in Philadelphia? Uh, we're not getting the whole thing. We're getting 80% or whatever that means. It, it's yep. cloudy in Buffalo today, though, no? Mm-hmm. Not Can we show Frank great. the T-shirt? Because I thought the T-shirt was funny. He'll like this. Um, like, Buffalo just can't have nice things, right? We know this. Um, and so, of course, Rhett's been telling us for weeks that hotels are sold out. You know, Buffalo's going to double in size. And uh, right on cue, you can't have nice things, Buffalo. 100%. This is fact. And it was absolutely crystal clear blue skies yesterday, Frankie boy. Just wonderful <laughs> weather, exquisite weather. And you wake up today and you know you're in Buffalo. Well, Still just like the Sabres, can't see the, can't see the sun. Now, the good news for the Sabres is that they will remain in Buffalo. Uh, seeing uh -huh. your Twitter feed earlier today, I'm not sure we can say the same thing about the Coyotes. And this, but this I've been whole, saying that forever. And I know, people, yeah. the Coyotes fans all shit on me saying I have it out for the team and I'm not accurate or honest right. or whatever. Like I have some agenda to try and strip the the, the area. I can't believe you're team. trying to get them out of there, Frank. What's Are wrong? You with like I, the Coyotes, off, Frank? Like I have that power. Like it would be unbelievable if I did. I'm just <laughs> telling you what's happening behind the scenes, and I've been telling you forever. Yeah. And you don't listen. Mm. Well, Frank, here's the thing. Sports fans are many things, but first and foremost, they're very logical and they like to just observe and very, very patiently roll through information and make educated decisions. They wouldn't just, you know, yell things and be emotional and irrational, uh, especially Coyotes fans. I, I'll give you another example. I did our Vancouver neighbor show, Sakaris and Price on Friday, yep. and we were talking about my NARS trophy vote. And I just said, look, these have been two amazing seasons from Hughes and McCarr. I'm torn. Okay. And I got some guy tweeting me yesterday repeatedly. If you're not voting for Quinn, you shouldn't have a vote. <laughs> and it's just like, dude, it's really, I promise you, it's not that simple. Do you see it as a close race? I see Quinn in the landslide personally. Um, I think Chris had a good year, but not a great year. And, and Quinn's had a great year. No, Quinn has had a great year. By Makar's standards, it hasn't been as good as he's previously been, but that yeah. doesn't mean that it's not just as good or close to Quinn. Yeah. Have you, uh, I know one of the points in there is that a lot of Makar's ice time happens to be when the big line's out there. Yep. And I've, I've you know, I, and I did some more work on the, the defensive metrics and numbers yeah. over the weekend, and they are, you know, quite impressively in Quinn's you know, yeah. favor. I mean, I'm, I'm leaning towards Quinn Hughes at number yeah. one, but I'm not, it's not like, this isn't like, Hey, I'm filling out my ballot and I don't have to think. Yeah, no, it's not Patrice Bergeron for the Salky, right? It's, <laughs> uh, yeah. And look, that's, that's you being a non fan. You're being rational and rolling through information and making an informed decision. Unlike coyotes fans who, uh, we see a prospective next owner in the NHL in Salt Lake City today on Twitter saying, hey, if we got an NHL team, what should we name them? Wake up. I'm just like, honestly, wake up and uh, and listen to what I'm telling you. No one that's a prospective owner in the NHL gets a team without kissing the NHL's ring. Mm -hmm. You have to get on a knee and kiss the ring. Yep. You have to play by Gary Bettman's rules. and. There is a, I'm telling you, a 0.0% chance that Ryan Smith, I'm not saying he overtly asked for permission, but he 100% advised the NHL that he would be putting out a survey today mm. soliciting fans for potential NHL team names in Salt Lake City. Hmm. Now the next question for our super sleuths is... <laughs> Why would a prospective NHL owner in Salt Lake City yeah. do it today? Huh? They're not getting, well, if they are getting an expansion team, they're not playing next season in Salt no, Lake God, City. No, God, no. Yeah. So why on earth would you need to start soliciting names today? Oh, wait, is there a team that in Arizona doesn't have an NHL arena to play in and Correct. could potentially be relocated? Correct. 
Hmm. Yeah. So then the next super sleuth question, as I hold your hand and walk you through this, mm -hmm. is so the Coyotes send out renderings last week and say that they are committed to winning the Arizona State Land Auction. Yes. Fact. I would say that is 100% true. However, I would say that they're trying to win the land auction, best as I can see, for a Coyotes expansion franchise to play in that arena. Whoa. Okay, so there's there's let's, the wrinkle I have. Let's piece all that together. Let's yeah. smash it up and turn it into a nice, tasty, delicious sandwich for everyone. Yeah. Does that all make sense? I mean, the Phoenix thing makes more sense now. I just don't know why that ownership group would, they'd want, if they got out of bed with them at the NHL offices, why they'd want to get back into bed with those guys. That's Maybe the one it's under a very specific set of terms. Okay. Maybe it's if you get an arena built, totally built, and if you present this price to pay us again, and if you, if, 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 maybe he doesn't hit all those targets. Yeah, and so I think what's interesting about this whole equation is I think most people paying attention and that are watching this program would say, yeah, there's a really good chance the Coyotes end up in Salt Lake City very soon. How soon can it be is where things get gray. No, it's, it's like, not. So is it next year? 100%. Thank you. Okay, so that that, that is where I was going. And then if they are going to be there next year with a new owner, the the the, the why I, else I, is he doing it today? I'm with you, Frank. I'm with you. Let me just walk. Uh, we're holding hands here. You you okay. were you were you were walking in the school zone and you got right on the freeway. There's a lot in the middle there. So, I'm, dude, I'm on the short bus. I'm just I'm just telling you're, you. Give yourself credit. You're an insider. You break a lot of news. You're very good at what you do. Detangling the guys that own this team that are a bit of a problem in Arizona and getting this franchise into the hands of the guy in Salt Lake, that's tricky for the league. No, and what not. you just said to us makes it less tricky. If you say to Alex Morello and his crew, look, we're taking this franchise, we're going to Salt Lake, but we still want you as an owner, Get all, check all these boxes and we'll come back with an expansion team. Now, all of a sudden, you're not in a legal wrangling trying to get this guy to sell to the Salt Lake guy. That, am I filling in the blanks appropriately? Not necessarily. That's okay. one way you could potentially do it. Yeah. Another way you could do it would be to purely just have the league purchase the franchise from you. And so then you'd have to agree on a franchise well, price. You know, all of this is predicated on Alex Maruello not being a combatant. And how's that been so far? <laughs> this time it hadn't been good, but I think there might have been, and I don't know all the details and I'm not at the point yet where I can report anything, yeah. but I think it, it at least appears to me that the people that I'm talking to believe that there may have been a breakthrough. Okay. And so I guess the, the only thing I'm trying to bridge here is that he's been notoriously difficult to deal with. He still owes money to the city of Glendale. He immediately started renegotiating contracts with vendors right, when he bought the team. He doesn't have a lot of didn't goodwill in the community. Bills. Trust me, what, I've heard everything. Di didn't send per diem or planned meals for the guys in the bubble in Edmonton. We, we know all that shit. But if you dangle an expansion franchise, maybe that allows the league to extract this franchise from him more easily, I guess is, is where. Yeah. I, and I, he I, may think that he's got it uh, locked down that he may be getting another franchise. I Maybe he is, maybe he isn't. Maybe mm -hmm. whatever going back to Arizona is open for anyone to bid on. I, I have no clue. Mm. All I know is I agree with your premise that, if the league had its choice, they probably would not be jumping back into bed with this guy. And they also have a very real problem that's right in front of their face. That is to your point, we need to get this franchise out of this guy's hands. Yeah. What is our Avenue and, and machination for doing that? And mm -hmm. then we'll deal with whatever damage comes from that after the fact. Cause that to me is the tri trickiest part of the whole thing. People saying it's not an NHL rink, they get it out of Phoenix, and look, there's a billionaire that wants to buy it. That's the easy stuff. The hard is like, this guy's going to want a huge value for his franchise, and the league's going to want to go to the Salt Lake billionaire and extract a huge relocation fee. So, yeah, where are and, you and actually, there's a bigger problem in between there. You're missing the middle piece, the cheese on this sandwich, mm -hmm. which would be that all the NHL's other 29 owners, and I say 29 because. Vegas and Seattle and obviously Arizona, they don't get a cut. Right. 
they all want some of this uh, relocation money. Totally. Yeah. That it it they prop this league propped up that franchise for a long time and yeah. invested significant capital throughout bankruptcies to do it. The those owners are like, okay, yeah, now time to pay us back for mm -hmm. that. And in addition to the lack of revenue that that situation has generated. So how do you get him to sell you back the franchise and then charge Ryan Smith enough in Salt Lake to then the spread in between those two things gets slid to the owners? Yeah. And that, that's the Am great I, riddle. Does yeah. it make sense? I'm with you. Totally. And, and that's... That's the that's the chess game that Gary's trying to play right now. That's interesting. Okay, well, so I never not saying anything. You have yeah. you ever seen a team release renderings and a staunch, full throated commitment to a market, and then have the league say nothing? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Even the have Tempe you ever thing, seen the Gary league Bettman was supportive of, right? before at, at All Star. Yeah. I've never seen him answer a question when asked about his faith in the Arizona franchise, he basically said, I tend to trust people unless given a reason not to. And yeah. that was a really weird way of saying like, Hmm. It was the first time publicly that he'd wavered on his, like he's been so steadfast in that being a market that they have to stay with. It was the first time publicly you'd seen well, Gary through all the shit they've been through all the bankruptcies, all the shitty owners, all the different arenas, all the moving around town. That was the first time publicly where he, you were like, yep, he's done here. He's done They're backed into a corner because they don't have a viable building. And yeah. the rest of the time throughout Glendale, they could have played there. Yep. They can't, they could continue on in Mullet Arena for three more years, but there's so much toxicity there. I don't know why that makes any sense when you could just move them to a guy who is basically rolling out the red carpet for you, who also happens to be in one of the wealthiest and fastest growing cities in the U.S. Yeah. Yep. Makes sense to me. So, okay, let's play matchmaker. Uh, I'm I'm Gary. You can be Alex. Hey, Alex, I'm going to give you 600 million US for that franchise. Um, it's way more I'm, than that. Well, I mean, this is where it gets tricky, right? Because he yep. wants the relocation fee to split with the owners more than the sale price. Gary doesn't give a shit about the sale price. No, he has to give number. a shit about the sale price because if it's public, you have yeah. to get enough money from Maruello in order for him to walk. Right. Um, okay, so let's. So a team that's that may or may not be making money is worth six hundred million. You're thinking one billion, and then this is the problem with the franchises in general. There's no number. There's no right. There's no earnings to build a price off of. Yeah, yeah. it's 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 uh it's it's, it's the price of joining the club. That's what we're yeah. talking about. One billion dollar. I I'd right? be shocked if that team changes hands without Al Alex Maruello getting a billion dollars. Fuck. Even what, with that depressed franchise in that yeah. market with no arena with 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 i get all of that yeah the question is what can you extract from ryan smith on the other end right so maybe it's a 300 million dollar relocation fee and if for 1.3 he gets a franchise in salt lake maybe i would have to think it's yeah it's at least that jays and what was it 75 for winnipeg to move something like that it was 150 million dollar relocation fee. Whew. And what was Morello in for here? Like 400, something like that? Three something? I think he paid three off the hop. Jeez. But I think he's written some really big checks. I think he's had a significant debt service that he's carried. Yeah. I think. Well, yeah. 5, look, there was a report from Forbes last year that they were revenue positive. I, I think that team has been hemorrhaging cash. Yeah. Uh, there's a whole pile of debt there. When is a, a timeline that, that works for the NHL to get this done? Because this is obviously, they'd love to be working on scheduling now and arena availability and all that shit. And if the team's going to be in Salt Lake or Phoenix and you don't know yet, that makes it more difficult. I'd be shocked if they are not drafting simultaneous schedules, one with them in Arizona, one with them in Salt Lake. Yeah. Um, Timeline-wise, some people are whispering that this announcement is coming as soon as the day after the Coyotes' last game of the season in Arizona. It makes sense. Could go all the way until May 31st. What's that? Your May two, four long weekend for us. Memorial day. That's sort of the drop dead date. Yeah. And whatever happens after that in June with the land auction is really just a play of whoever wants to get the next NHL expansion return in, in Arizona. And 
apparently retaining the name of the team there. So do you believe that that because site you have is the, the one that the NHL will be happy with? Is it is it a primo spot? I don't know any of the detail. I know where it's located. I've, yeah. I've heard mixed reviews. Some people say it's perfect. Some people say it's a little bit too far north from Scottsdale. Okay. Again, beggars can't be choosers. Um, yeah. It's a small parcel of land, relatively 95-ish acres. And it seems to be at least appraised for a decent enough price at 68 and a half million bucks. Some believe that's way under market value. Mm. Um, I don't know. Yeah. And by the way, can we just like have like a quick brainstorm on like what the next Salt Lake team name should be? Yes. Rhett's muted. So let's unmute Rhett. Cause I, know I, he's I, with naming I my buddy Pete Blackburn has been calling for the Salt Lake city soakers. I feel like that? there's some vague panty references there. Jesus. We were going so well. Look, Boom's not here. I mean, when the cat's <laughs> away, the mice will play. He'd be right in there. He'd like. I saw the the uh, the sun dogs that would carry some of the legacy. I, I think you'd rather wipe all the you'd legacy. Want away. No, I'm telling yeah. you, you want no <laughs> legacy, no colors. You don't ever want to be related to that pile of hot garbage that the Coyotes have been. The Grizzlies carried a team name there for a long time in the ECHL and IHL, I believe. That's correct. Um, Salt Lake does have a pretty solid hockey history. Never mind the Olympic stuff. You could lean into a lot of different spots for it what do you think there's soakers get out of here it's, there's ice uh utah ice here. i don't know I, there's a million things ice is the best thing you could come up with i i know i'm not i have you brought I, the question up and you had ice in the whole i really just wanted to talk about water. panty soakers that was it <laughs> okay. let's be honest <laughs> Rhett, i don't know i hadn't spent a lot of time thinking it's about all like booze thing. hounds what are we calling them eh? the no, that wouldn't be it. No, it's not gonna that happen. would be the Buffalo Booze Hounds. Right. Yeah, my bad. Rest I don't care cat. about the name. I don't. Yeah, well, I like, do. I want it to be lovely. Just okay. like Kraken. Um, is this guy just playing, being a smart businessman, going, you can have the franchise and, and pretending to go down the path of, oh, but I'm going to be in on, on an expansion team as a negotiating tool? That's what I would do. I don't give a shit if I get another team. If I make, I don't know what the guy's worth, but if he's if he's yeah, going to get gonna... a billion, a billion plus, even if he's into it and he's care, it's six hundred. If he's making a half of five hundred million a dollars, yeah. you're just going thanks. I'm not sinking that back into another franchise. League would love that. Enough to deal with this guy anymore. <laughs> they would be doing cartwheels. Yes. Yeah. But you have to play nice until then, just like Ryan Smith has been playing nice. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a hundred. You said hundred percent. They'll be there in Salt Lake next year. You want to walk that back a little or what are you no. thinking here? Uh, 95%. Look, there's a long, long way to go to get yes, there. there yeah. I'm just presenting to you and to everyone else. The, the machinations of what I believe is actually taking place behind the scenes. Yeah. Well, and I had never put that expansion piece together with the, the, the new Phoenix property. I thought this was all just another temp a try, like another hail Mary from this crew. So that's an interesting ad today. And, also that they can get there for next year and it's not too late. I know there's been a lot of It's not even close to too late. Winnipeg yeah. didn't didn't leave. That wasn't announced till May, May 31st. Yeah. Uh okay, lots there. Rhett, mm -hmm. what else have we got in mind? That's uh I want to talk about all stuff. things Philadelphia, Frank, the Philadelphia fanatic like Oh uh, man, torts. Torts. Oh, I was thinking more boom and me being well, a, that, a I was going to get into uh, that. There's been yeah. earthquakes in your area. Yeah, you we heard you hugged. Boom, you got the coat delivered. Like, earthquake. Jesus. Which it topic was, is good? Hey, look. Uh, boom has some video evidence, but he came in and uh, I took him to my the local's cheesesteak place. And yeah. uh, he was a little bit horrified that I get double meat on my sandwich. <laughs> Like he, he was, was like, dude, I don't know how I can put this one away, let alone the fact that you got double meat. And he he took he took some video and some photos, but uh, yeah, I don't know. That evidence seems to be incriminating. Mm. And um, yeah, I took him to a another local uh, treat. Get a got a water ice, water ice as we would call it here. It's uh, kind of exactly. like a mix between like a Slurpee and ice cream, but it's flavored. And oh. there is ice cream in it. Okay. Water ice. 
Italian See, ice? Does that not mean anything to you? No, I know. Yeah, what, ice sure shave for it. sure, but you wouldn't put ice, ice anything dairy. It's more that. soupy than the shave ice, Got if that ice. makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. And I just want to say, I would be, I don't think that that's a knock on you at all, the double meat. I'm proud of you, buddy. I am as well. Yeah. Look, Protein's good for you. Sometimes it depends on what shop you go to, but sometimes they get a little chintzy. You get yes. too much roll and not enough meat. And you're like, what I'm am good. I doing? This is a waste of calories. Like if I'm going to do it, like I might as well at least dive in. That's why we love the smoked meat in Montreal. It's the, the bread to meat ratio is phenomenal. And look, uh, I took him to this one special place because part of the allure aside from the really good roll is their American cheese is of the liquid variety. It's melted American cheese. And they just like take a ladle of it and just, yeah. Love and it. Rhett decided, after, or uh, not Rhett, Boom decided after all that to get Wiz. On top. He added the Wiz? He, no, he, he bypassed the liquid American. Oh. And went with Wiz. God, you just got to trust locals in your travel. What the hell is he doing? You should be doing yeah. double meat and the liquid American cheese. He went like single that. whiz, no onions, and then asked for a side of pickles. And I was like, whoa, 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 you can't do pickles. What are you doing? Here? Who's, who Look brought this guy in here? Looking to get beat up. Jeez. Yeah. We had, it was really funny though. Like some tour bus uh, pulled in right before us, uh, some band. It might've been like Uncle Cracker or someone like someone <laughs> like that's like on the casino circuit. Mm -hmm. uh, they were all in line in front of us, you know, taking videos. And I took them to the right place. They found their way to the, to the real local place, not the, the you know, tourist spot. Yeah. Did you get your jacket? I did. Okay. Now that it's uh, spring. Yeah, see, <laughs> I have serious, I have the face. serious problems with this photo. Uh, um, there's about nine chins there, not one. And it might have been the double meat that, Lended itself to that. If that was cropped a little higher, I wouldn't know what was happening. Um, I'd have a few guesses. <laughs> yeah, that's a little <laughs> unfortunate, isn't it? As uh, they said in office space, that's the O face that you're, you've got shown off there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just change out the background from gas station to church and we'd be dealing. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Did you go to WrestleMania? How many I days? didn't. I went soft. I know I got the jacket back, but I stood yeah. outside for two hours that morning at so kids' soccer games, and I was like, F this. There is zero chance that I am standing outside tonight with my nine-year-old for five hours with a bunch of weirdos. In, it's it's a grown-up decision. Dude, the, the real field temperature was like one degree. Yeah, this is what I was going to ask. So, so when you watched it, it didn't necessarily, I mean, at least the small snippets I saw on social media, it didn't look like it wasn't an arena show. This was at Lincoln Financial, the football stadium, like 67,000 people. Yeah, the attendance was 73,000 both nights. And Holy. They, and not if not you, one. If you notice the ring, they had heat lamps at the top of the ring. So that part was at least heated. Yeah. Um. Dude, the winds were like 20 to 30 miles an hour. Like, boom, really? like I know Boom's like, dude, I can handle the cold. I'm like, I, I, I'm sure you can being from Calgary. I just, I'm not going to volunteer between the two nights to spend 10, 10 hours outside. I don't like it that much. And uh, did you do okay in the secondary ticket market if you had to get rid of your seats? No, I lost money. Hmm. And I was like perfectly okay with that. To me, that was like a win. Well, I hope he's happy. Look, I'm sure they had the time of their life when that Undertaker bell rang last night. Oh, that was, that was good. Yeah. I did send him one text throughout the weekend and any wrestling fan, because again, I'm not a big wrestling fan, yep. but I did watch and I texted him and I just said, Seth Rollins equals Pinder. That's all the thing said. I don't know. You'll have, to, you'll have to Google him. Sure. It's a compliment. Yeah, his name is actually Seth freaking Rollins. Should I add that to my handle? Dude, it's you. I'm telling you, he even has like weird maneuvering like you. Maneuvering? What are you talking about? I don't know. Weird high <laughs> leg kicks and weird shit. Twitchy going and on. spazzy and he's probably caffeinated. He's probably <laughs> a maniacal drinker. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, this guy'd be fun. That it, dude, that is you. I love it. I need a belt. Jack, get us a belt. Are Pittsburgh getting in, Frank? I know it's Pennsylvania. You, you, you probably hate those guys, or the, you, Philly does, but 
That would be a hell of a story if Sid and the ki- and the crew could get in. The math is getting so better, slightly daunting. I would say yep. uh, they've played really well. And here's the thing: is like you have a day like Sunday where, um, just like the Red Wings kind of eke out a win. That's the one team I'm a little bit concerned about. They get them um, once. That's the good news. They get the Red Wings once, the Islanders once. And they have the tiebreaker, which is okay. important. Which is row or regulation wins? Regulation wins, yep. Yeah. And so they do have the tiebreaker, so they're really one point back. I'd say they do get in, and I would say that it is – um, I'd say it's going to be Penguins and – Islanders, which is Islanders mind blowing because decent because they like, were way here, out of it a while ago. Just for perspective, like what we're talking about is historic. Okay, the Penguins were nine points out with ten games left. That Yay. that's never happened in the salary cap era. That's beyond Hamburglar. That's beyond St. Louis Blues last place in January to win the Stanley Cup. Like really, it is absolutely incredible what Pittsburgh is trying to pull off. Um. The thing is, they are picking up, piling up wins at a time when you, you need a perfect storm in the NHL standings. Yeah, you, you do. need yeah. to to get points while everyone else is getting zero. And the mm-hmm. Flyers and Islanders are, are sorry, the Flyers and Caps are absolutely just fumbling the bag. Yeah, no question. Um, and the, the one thing I am excited about is I didn't. I don't think there's a lot of juice with Flyers or or Capitals, or Islanders, or Wings necessarily, if you somehow got Sid on Broadway in round one, that one versus wild card, I'm totally in. I wouldn't have been with, in with any other team. Maybe Philly, but... Uh. Dude, and where did Evgeny Malkin come from again? Russia? What are you talking about? <laughs> no, I mean, look, he's got six points in his last three games. Like, I mean, out of the clear yeah. blue sky, like, no. this guy had a miserable season and has Pretty- been a horse. Again. Producer Jack is just... Absolutely fired up. Huge yeah. Penguins guy. He's making the O face. He is definitely making the O face. Frank, thanks for everything. We'll chat again soon. We do need some more boomer stories, but I figured it'd be better when we get him back for that. Yeah, I'm curious. I sent him 20 places. Let's see. Let's see what his waistline looks like when he comes back. Yeah, he'll show that. That's great. Ratings bonanza. See thanks, guys. Frank. <laughs> there he goes. No goodbye. Just out of here. See ya. Uh, Frank joined us on the TELUS Insider Hotline. You can enter to win one of six monthly prizes, including tickets to Flames hockey games, awesome tech like AirPods, Apple Watches, and more. No purchase necessary. All you got to do, go online, fill out a quick survey to enter. Head to www.telus.com slash Flames Contest. Flames and TELUS, been together a while. They've been partners since 05. They've got the Telus Skater Program, as well as the title sponsor of the Premium Club of the Dome, the Telus Club. Thank you, Telus, for Frank. Sorry about his uh, horrible Salt Lake City name suggestion. Yeah, that was no good. No. I'm kind of excited for them to go. Yeah, get the hell out of there. There's so much bad energy around that team. And it's that's why bad. I'm going to take some credit here. We needed to get to Mullet Arena this year, and we did it. Yeah, it was a good call by you. We did there it. You we go. knocked it off the list. We yep. can say we were there. It was a hell of an experience. We rocked the mullet at the mullet. And it's actually miserable to think that a team can't survive in Scottsdale, but it's never gone well. Well, and the thing is, it's never really been in Scottsdale. That's the problem, right? You knew if you got a rink in the right spot of town with the right owner, that would be a home run. That could be Tampa. That could be the place everyone wants to go and take less than market value because it's a tax-free state and people love being in Scottsdale, but they've been in Glendale and they left downtown and now they're in a college arena with 5,000 bleeping seats. It's been a nightmare. Yeah, the old builder rink in the middle of nowhere, it never works. No. Like Ottawa's finally going to fix that mistake in the next five years here. The new owner and Lars. Florida, they're, for a top-ranked team... And they've done better, and it's but they've been so long since they've been relevant. There were a yep. lot of dim, dark, murky years there. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't a, it wasn't a sports move at all. It's a real estate play. It's all hard. Yep, and it's, yep. And it was the same and, in in Arizona. That was the guy wanted to make a massive real estate development, and they to get the whole thing sexy. They 
build an arena, football stadium, and then massive real estate around that. Like massive. It was never about the team. It was and always about real estate. It's still staggering to think that the, <laughs> that rink is sitting there. Yeah. Not having an anchor tenant. Collecting dust. I mean, it's a big city. You can do concerts in that, but it's nice to have an anchor tenant that gives you the 40 to 50 dates a year, right? Yeah, that's pretty slim pickings if you're only running concerts through there, but maybe not. I don't know. Yeah. It's still a pain I mean, to go to for a concert, I guess. Yeah, it's not ideal. And the city of Glendale is the real victims here because, you know, they, they're the ones that have to pay for that thing, subsidize it. They're like closing libraries and not mowing soccer lawns and shutting down playgrounds and shit. Like it's a disaster. That's public money. Shouldn't be doing that. It's focus on the things that matter for don't be part of a real estate play for some billionaire. Get out of here. It's my, my soapbox. Nenshi. Frickin Nenshi. <laughs> uh, okay. Let us uh, move to your chance to win a large amount of money. It is the, Service, big share. A million bucks could be yours. I'm not messing around. This is real. Buy a right? team. You cannot buy that team. Uh, you could definitely buy a team of a league, not the NHL, unless maybe you already have hundreds of millions and it's just another million for you, in which case I don't want you to win. But Service Credit Union, it's the service big share. It's back for the sixth year with your chance to win $1 million just by saving money. Anyone can enter, including you, Rhett? You've just got to become a member, start saving with service, and every 500 bucks that you move over, we'll give you five entries into the Service Big Share contest. There's a few ways you can earn entries. You can save daily in a banking account. You can also fast track your savings with a high yield savings account. You can invest in a GIC, also with great interest rates and term lengths. Also TFSA, RRSP, short and long-term goals there. Transfer your existing savings to service for your chance to win a million dollars. Contest ends at the end of April which means it's go time. Get over there, win that million bucks, purchase that franchise you've always wanted. Maybe one of those pickleball franchises. They're probably going for more than that. Yeah, I don't know if you could even do that, but... Yeah. I feel like you can join me in Florida. Place. Hang out. One bedroom apartment. One bedroom apartment. For, uh, for rules, go to service.ca slash win. And uh, yeah, you've got till April 30th to get that done. Hey, Retsky. Get on it. Get on it. Let's get to the Pinder Report. We do that for Village Honda. We'll have a recap of all things sports and crocodile of the weekend. Mondays are always a big, big download on the Pinder Report. Uh, what does not change day to day at Village Honda is that they've got new in stock inventory on the ground. Start your automo automotive adventures at Village Honda, where new vehicle pricing is MSRP. They're in the Northwest Auto Mall and online at villagehonda.com. Okay. We start with the Calgary Flames, Rhett, and afterburner with our in the dome boys. We give them the late nights because they got a they, they got salty languages. They talk like sailors. So Saturday late night against uh, the Greasers from Edmonton, perfect for the in the dome boys. This is a one in a billion chance to get the two. We can get both Aginla brothers. Can you fucking imagine? Can you imagine twenty dude twenty twenty seven comes around and it's Tej and Joe. You look at how cool it is. The Hughes brothers are in New Jersey and they have no tie. To that team imagine the iggy bros imagine the new arena we got the iggy bros we signed kale mccarr in the summer of 2027 the vibes would be so oh, immaculate my God. sometimes we just have to remember that being a fan is about having fun and this would be really fun gee yeah. is it it would be an absolute travesty if the flames passed on tija ginla because like some like bullshit about like oh we just don't want to look like we're picking him because of his name it would be a travesty if Tej turns into a solid nhl player or even a star and we pass on him like we'd look back on that and just be like that's such a mistake what would be worse <laughs> passing on Tej and he becomes a stud or going for Tej and he doesn't become a stud yeah the former is worse Oh, they're, they're that's dreamland on Saturday night. Again, LeBros, new rank, Kale McCarr and free agency. They Connie, hire late. these guys. They were up late. Holy <laughs> smack. Yeah, I like they, it, though. That would be awesome. Well hydrated for that show. I'm, I'm hoping for the fellas, Mike and Jordan there. It's going to be interesting because Teej is not going in the top eight in most mock drafts, but he's continuing to heat up and have a great 
draft season. Like he scored again last night, another three point game, I believe. We'll get to it in a moment. And there are the Flames. There's your inverse standings, Retro. That red line is the top five. Arizona's on a bit of a heater. Now Montreal's squeaked into a top five slot. Ottawa one point ahead of the Flames. Now the tragedy is the Flames have a game in hand here, so you've got to be very careful with that game in hand. But uh, I'm telling you, this is this is a good player coming to the Calgary Flames, whether that's one of five very good defensemen we expect to go in the top ten, whether that's one of two or three centermen we expect to go in the top ten, one of a couple dynamic, huge wingers. And is it too early for Teach? That's a question that Craig Connor and his scouts will have to ask. They make their list. He was asked about it on After Hours with Scott Oak following the Oilers game. Well, how do you approach you know, the the possibility of drafting Teach? We just make the list of the players. We put them from best to worst and top guy on our list we draft. You can't overcomplicate it. You can't get romantic. But they also will have great intel on the human. I feel like they know some people that know him well. It's good. Yeah. I- I think they're going to be, I like the idea of it. I just, I just, I get scared looking at the roster and they don't have defensemen. I'm like, and a center. They don't have a center either. And he's not a center. Like the greatest need is at center and defense. Now that doesn't mean teach can't be the best player available. And if he is, I say, go get it. But if, if you're trying to squint and say, ah, like it, he has to be the best guy on the border. It's a mistake. I'm sorry. Yeah, it just has it, to be that way. If it lines up and it's the right pick, or maybe yeah. you, or, or maybe you trade down, or maybe you package that Vancouver pick with some other things and we'll get another top dozen pick, top fifteen pick, Jacob Marks from the summer. Let's go! Come on! Come on! Mm-hmm. Come on! Come on! Mm-hmm. Anyway, there's uh, we'll see. It won't be boring, and you can see where the 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 the, the conversation shifted. The, the afterburner had nothing to do with the game. <laughs> the clip I, I did notice it our wasn't opening statement Oilers was the, the draft jersey. lottery simulator like <laughs> it's that time of year right? clip. I saw another clip from the fellows yeah you know, talking about one. Zary or Zari yeah getting sad that was uh, a few games ago yeah. and yeah I kind of feel a couple of ways about it if you want to revisit it like it was one game. He wasn't playing great. He's been quite quiet since we're com- coming back from injury. And Huska said, just because you're young doesn't mean you stay in the lineup, as if to say you're not getting preferential treatment. But my counter argument to Huska would be Jonathan Huberto has played much worse hockey this year and has not been sad. And, and so is that preferential treatment for vets? Like, does he not get the benefit of the doubt with this incredible season that he's put together for, for a couple of games where he's a little pedestrian? I, I don't, I, I'm not going to fight to the death. I, I think both sides have some validity to them, but. I think the important thing to recognize, and this is because I thought about it at first too, and I'm like, yeah, that's stupid. Just play the kid. Who cares? Yeah. But then I thought about it for a while. And I'm like, no, you don't want him to be just a player. You know he's made the team next year. You've yes. established that. What yes. you're sending is a message of we don't need you to be average. We don't need a, a third liner. Yeah. We're teaching you every game matters. You have to be a driver for our or organization. Yep. And I, I and at, like I said, at first I was of the opinion, yeah, put him in there. And then I'm like, no, he's already in there. He's yep. made it. It's not yep. about finding out what he is. It's now about extracting and making him realize he needs to be a star. Not we don't want you to be a real good first round pick. We want you to be a stud in the league. And you've proven you can be, and you don't get to take nights off. This is your standard. This is where we want you. And if you dip below it, that's not okay. Just because you're new and these are meaningless games doesn't mean you get to play. Um, I- I'm with that with Huska. I also think that same logic applied to veterans, and you'd seen some different lineups earlier this year as well. So, I mean, I, 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 I if, and you know what? Here's the thing they put him at center. He came back, he had a good game. That's huge for this organization if he's a center. And it's late in the year. This is absolutely the time to try it. And if you needed to sit him to get his attention and his best efforts, and now you've responded by saying, okay, now here's the carrot. And he played well at center. Okay, you've got my attention now. This is going to be an interesting development. If he and or Pospisil can play center ice, it changes a lot of things about uh, how this roster can be constructed. If you can get Sharon Govich back to the wing where he scores more, case in point Saturday, I, I like that a lot. But Did again, you say possible at center. center? He's possible so- thinks he's a center. Connie told us that when we were in Toronto. Um, he's not heavy, but he's he's a, he's bigger than than Zeri, uh, and he's 
he moves very well. I'd love to see it. I don't know that because he thinks he's a center, he is a center, but we're, we're talking about six games in a meaningless uh, April here, right? Like, why not give it a try? Let's see it. Let's see it. Uh, let's go to the schedule. Here's what we're looking at. Three-game California roadie for the Calgary Flames. It is uh, This is Boomer's nightmare at the old job. 8.30 puck drop on a Tuesday. 8.30 puck drop on a Thursday. Uh, I have gone and staffed Afterburner without our jovial ray of sunshine pal this week. Is, is that going to go over okay? I've got all four of those games covered with no Boomer this week. Is everyone going to be okay with that? That's knowing your crowd. That's a, <laughs> that's well well conceived on your part. Thank you. Yes. And thank you to all those that are going to be covering the Afterburners. Uh, tomorrow night, I've got uh, Kent Wilson and Mike Gold, the couple of the Writers at uh, Flames Nation, past and present. So that will be Tuesday, Thursday, Pike and myself. Friday, Pike and Gold. And Sunday, the In the Dome boys. We like them late on weekends where they can uh, curse freely. Like sailors arriving in port to vats of whiskey. Rum. Sailors like rum. They do, yes. Yeah, did I say whiskey? I meant rum. It's like the opening statements versus thoughts. I, it's clearly rum. Sailors love rum. Uh, let's take a look at what the playoffs would be. Actually, you know, we got some flames news. What's going on here? We got a recall. They're a little dinged up on the back end. Uh, Hochik, I thought has struggled in recent outings yes. mightily. Hanley's dinged up. Gilbert came in, but I mean, love Dennis Gilbert as being the best Dennis Gilbert he can be. You got a kid here. Slobiov has not been up since I think probably late 23. Like I want to say November, December, maybe when Tanev got nicked up big, interesting, young. Why not? Six games, just like everything else. Why not? Give Take a look. look. Take a look. You want to bring up Jan Kuznetsov for another look, too, on the back end? I'm okay with that. And, yeah, I, there's going to be an interesting battle at camp next year with all these guys that profile as third-pair defensemen. I, I might have a Buffalo bias. Yep. I feel like Gilbert's as good, if not better, than some of these guys. Yeah, I mean, I don't think he looked at necessarily on Saturday, but yeah, yeah. He, when he's right, he adds an element of physicality. He's scrappy, he's simple, but he hasn't played a lot of late and he had an injury midseason. I thought his best hockey was earlier this year, yeah. But I, I don't mind him as your 6-7 next year, 7-8. Give some ice time, Husk. Let's go. Come on, Husk. A lot of D all of a sudden. A lot of D. A lot of D. A lot of D. Slovyov back. Let's go to the playoffs. What would they look like if it happened tonight? Oh, banger or not? We got Dallas, Vegas. I'm calling that a banger, right? Top left. Uh, Colorado, Winnipeg. Oh, boy, Jets fans. I'm sorry. <laughs> Although, Colorado in a spot. McKinnon, nicked up. Ranton, maybe a concussion on the weekend. Georgiev's not looked great. Justice Annan's been the better of the two netminders. A little speed wobble from the Avs down the stretch here. I would mm. think that their biggest concern is the goalie still, but yeah, those guys will have time to. They did better. win a cup with Kemper, and that's not a shot at Kemper, but it's it kind of feels like those Chicago not teams, where it's like exactly Yemi Crawford, like make a big save here or there. You don't have to be yeah. the best goalie in the league. Don't to screw win. us. Yes, kind of just the make the saves you're supposed to make, please. Vancouver, Nashville has got chaos written all over it. I don't know that that tops my list, but I just have a feeling it would be zany. You've got. Uh, the hottest team of the last month and a half against a team that was the best in the NHL for the first half of the year. And then Kings and Oilers will continue to sign up for because those have been great series. It'd be the third year in a row. Oilers have won both of them and come down from what? 3-1 or 2-0 or some, there's been some deficits recovered yeah. from by the Oilers. Yeah. Out East, love it. Tampa, Boston, that's a divisional rivalry. Yeah. Florida, Toronto, rematch from last year. Love yeah. that as well. Rangers and Wings will sub in Pittsburgh there, please. Yeah. I guess Kane on Broadway would kind of be interesting. There's, yeah, that, And then Kane's yeah. Islanders is snooze yeah. button. We'll sweep them and we'll see in the second round, Carolina. Not bad. That's going to be a hell of a first round. Well, you've got 16 teams that are really good. You should have some good matchups. Yeah, or 14, but sure. Yeah. I think we're almost at 16. Like, I don't know that the Islanders are going to get them. Oh, I see what you're saying. That are just, yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. But you should have, I think... Of the eight opening round series, six should be like, holy crap, these are yes. awesome. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
Art Ross race is getting spicy. Let's have a look at the point totals and games remaining. It is a three-horse race, but maybe two if McKinnon's out for a bit. We'll see. There's not really a timetable that I've seen with McKinnon, but safe to say he's not 100%. He's got 133 points and the fewest number of games remaining with four. McDavid's at 130. He's six back of Kucherov with six games remaining. And Kuch has got the six-point bulge on Connor with only five games remaining. So, Fat chance. No one's catching Kuch. Except that it's McDavid. He could just have a five-point night like no. this week, and you're like, but I, yeah. I, I think Kucherov's good enough this year that he might go do it too. Yeah, he had another three-pointer. It's like every night he's got three down the stretch here. It's been something. Fun. Kind of cool to see these totals. I didn't know we'd ever see these again. Mm -hmm. Like I think Jamie Benn won the Ross one year with like 87 points. Oof. <laughs> I'm not joking. Like it's, I, I never thought we'd get back to these totals. It's pretty fun. Three guys over 130 I, points. I, it's actually, obviously, those are the best of the best. But yeah. it is surprising there are that many, only because goaltending is so good. Yeah, yeah. Like they have learned that they have to put it into these spots, and they can do it. That's ridiculous. Yeah, it's it's a great point because it's not like the games are eight seven like they were in the 80s when we saw Gretzky putting up crazy numbers. It's still a 4-3 league a lot of nights. 3-2. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw the Salt Lake news. This is what we were talking about with Frank. If you missed it, there's Ryan Smith, the gazillionaire from Salt Lake, who has already expressed interest in a, quote, expansion franchise. But, of course, my, you could just change the name and relocate a franchise. Hmm. Uh, fill out this survey and send us your ideas. Yeah, he's... Uh, they're not being very subtle about this, are they? And the league knows, to Frank's point. This is not some guy going rogue. This is clearly all paving the way to the Coyotes moving there as soon as next year. Tonight, just two games. I would suggest we got a couple bangers, Rhett. You got Pittsburgh scrapping for their lives. Game of the year, Jack? Is it game of the year? Yes, it is. Until they win it, and then the next game will be? Also the game of the year. And then after they win that one, it'll be? The game of the year. Oh, my God. They got game of the years left. That's all they got left. Love it. And then Vegas limps into Vancouver, who have not been quite right down the stretch here. That one could be a first-round matchup, but more likely not. Hmm. Don't mind it. Good little doubleheader there. Uh, the Savannah Bananas are our favorite baseball team that we don't really care whether they win or lose because they just do fun things, and they remind us that minor league baseball smart. is even more ridiculous than professional baseball or Major League. So look, first off, let's freeze frame here. Outfits, no sleeves, like army camo bat, fluorescent things, uh, like vests. Like we are having fun. We're dressing up and playing baseball and it gets better. Scooge trying to strike out the side. He won't get it. Dear Meadows throws away his glove. Backflips, catches the ball. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Mr. Meadows, you've gone mad. <laughs> the only way to do the backflip catch better is to do it with the bare hand. And DR Meadows, the king of the backflip catch in the outfield, nails the trick play for the bananas. What a play. One of the greatest trick plays of all time. Really is. If and Rhett, that's tough for you. You lose that title of the king of the backfield catch in the outflip, but he outdid you there. You got to tip your cap. Oh, you're muted. That's why we can't hear you. What is this baseball? Because I've seen. I don't know. We need to find out more. Jack, can you do some research on the Savannah Bananas, please? <laughs> like they had a time clock going. Like it, I don't know that they play nine innings. They just they have a certain time limit. There's always crazy things going on. We saw an inflatable floaty behind the mound yeah um i i we need to make it we need to do some research we need a road trip savannah georgia let's go why not be close to florida he's on the way right easy trip for me yeah you, you won't even need a moving van just for that one bedroom you just need a couple boxes let's go okay into the nonsense portion of the program we don't do that without oh you skipped all the whl stuff oh my gosh that's right okay because we got to, you're right. We got to go back. I was actually going to suggest to you off air that perhaps some other playoff hockey could be mentioned. Yes. And so we will do that right now. And we were ready for it, but I got too excited about the Savannah Bananas. So let's get back to it. We are into the second round. 
These teams have all advanced PG through, Kelowna through, Portland through, Everett through. That's your Western Conference in the WHL out east. The one seed Blades against the Rebels, who beat the very young and skilled Medicine Hat Tigers in round one. And Moose Jaw Swift Current. All right. Sasky battle there. That's a nice travel for those guys, Moose Jaw and Swift. How far is that? Not far at all. Like like hour, two? Yeah, within... Within, within two, two hours. hours. That's yeah. gravy. Yeah. Saskatoon Red Deer a little further. A little further. You're probably talking five and a half. Five. Yeah, I would I've never. How fast that bus go? Drive within the limits, please. Thank you. Um, now, how did Kelowna get through? You're asking yourself, Red, because they were in round one. Well, in fact, they did this, and Regan Bartel tells us about it. They're buzzing. Something's coming. And a puck down low right corner. Here's Ward. Ward being hit on the play by Kendall. A nice steal. Chance in front. Wrist shot save. Cheat check chance. Side. Score! Too much. Too much power. Too much rocket. And it's TJ Kendall tying a franchise record. His eighth of this playoff series. He moves into a tie with Jordy Woodruff for most goals in a playoff series. One eighth of the series, Rhett. Eighth of the series. I like that. Franchise record. Now the Colorado Rockets are not new. Again? They do play playoffs a lot. Let's let's yeah, let's watch it again. Right and sound up. It's Regan Bartel. We got it's, just, it's not scores or scores. I'm excited about it, but what is Something's that coming. defenseman doing? And a puck down low right corner. Here's Ward. Ward being hit on the play by Kinla. Mm. Nice steal. Chance like, in front. That is shot a chance. Side. Side. Yeah. Too much. So they said too much. Yeah. Look at this. Ah! Yeah, he's afraid there. You still don't have a job coaching junior? I mean, I feel like you're just lazy. There's got to be people offering you. Watching the shit we're seeing, you need to be employed here. I I you'd have to give up your passion of podcasting, but still, kids, they could kids use you. do not know how to play hockey. They know how to make plays. There's just <laughs> skills, 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 skills. They don't play hockey. Now, the million-dollar question. Where is the defensive zone? Never heard of it. What? Don't know. D. Ooh. <laughs> defensive. Again, one goal, two helpers, plus two. Another three-point night for Tiege, who uh, is picking a good year to have his draft year. 47 bingos and then the playoffs. Oh, he couldn't get 50, eh? <laughs> Franchise record? He's 17, right? <laughs> Next year, you pencil him for 70. <laughs> Winger that can score. When was the last one? The last which? Winger that could score in Conger. Yeah. His dad, probably. Oh. Yeah. I mean, they did 35, but 50? 52? 52? Uh, he's good. We talked about it a lot. We won't stop talking about it again. And uh, the Flames will get a little more information. Draft lottery slated for the second round. Looks like the first week of May. They've not given us a date or a time yet. That'll be announced pretty soon here. Um, and not to bring up any negative energy at all concerning. Mm. We could have already had all three showing up. If they draft them, we could have had all three showing up in the city next year. Yes, the Calgary men did not select Joe Aginla. And hmm. the kid they did select, a very good player, has committed to Michigan. Where That's his cool. dad played college hockey. And also the front office for the Hitmen since has been yeah, no, I kind of evaporated. I noticed that. It's a tough one there. Now, does the family want the kid to have to wear that name bar at the age of 16 in Calgary? I don't know. But uh, nonetheless, the guy they took is not going to play in the Western League at all. So it's a mistake either way. Ouch. We're going to go ahead and give Rhett the uh, check mark on that take from a while ago. Hmm. Okay, into the dumb shit. We started off with our boy Tim Dotnacki, our blackjack pal in Calgary. He's on a heater, Rhett. Can he keep it going? 
Day 61, going to blackjack and bidding 10 cents for every Instagram follower I've got. There is an enormous 560,000 of your legends in here now. That's a whopping 46,000 extra on top of yesterday. The biggest single day growth so far. $56,000 bet coming right up. All fucking righty then. Day 61 brings about a $56,000 bet for the 560,000 legends of you in with us now. We're going to do $54,000 on the bus. 1,000 each of the side bets. Now, this guy looks like he definitely drinks banana milk. I need this man to go well for me. Ace, go 10! Yes! Yes! You wouldn't fucking read about it! You would not read about it! You would not read about it! You would not fucking read about it! Could not be scripted! Get Steven Spielberg on the line! We need a director for the upcoming movie! Holy shit, it's Blackjack 61. Two big wins on the trot. I will see you tomorrow. Because you better fucking believe I'm going to be betting even more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Star. I love him. Is it like some, some people say, like, if you ever meet your heroes, it could be like disappointing. I almost am afraid that I might run into this guy because I've just, I've got him on this pedestal of oh, one of the greatest humans that lives in the whole city. Yeah. I, he doesn't do fuck all apparently, but. Yeah. Oh, he does everything. He does everything we all want to do. He, gets, he makes a scene about some muzzy. He hardly doesn't work. Doesn't work for the man. You see him at the pub and he goes out to the hills and he skis when the snow is good. Yeah. What the hell we, are you talking about? We got to get this guy a barn burner blonde. Come Living on. the dream. We do need to get this guy a four pack. Let's go. Uh, okay, we're into the dumb shit now. Uh, guy went fishing. I think he's down south somewhere. Something went wrong. Let's go. Y'all want to know how big of a fucking dumbass the boy is? So I'm here fishing, correct? Or at least trying to. I go to open my night crawlers. My night crawlers? I accidentally brought gravy. Fuck. I mean, he could still have fun with the gravy. I just don't know what he's going to fish with. It's not the worst thing. Like, yeah, it could have been like tzatziki that's gone bad. I don't know. Uh, at least it's gravy. You st you got gravy in the wilderness. It's not the worst. Uh, baseball kid. That's what this one's called. Everyone dreams as a kid, right? Dream big. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that sound is good. If you are listening, not watching, that is the sound of an aluminum bat being bat tossed after a home run in this after man's a fake home run for a fake home run, an imaginary home run for the young man, and the bat flip then promptly lands on his skull. Ah! Uh, we've got an event coming. It is eclipse today. I think uh, we're, we're within minutes of the eclipse. Right? Should give us the live look. Is it still overcast as hell? Oh, man. It's gloomy. So is, just, is it just going to go dim? Like, what, what's going to happen? Is it... I don't even know what happens if, like, do uh, I need glasses? I got the glasses. I wouldn't even go outside. That looks like a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Red. So sorry. But no, you got another chance. There's another massive event coming. Now, are you familiar with cicadas or cicadas? How do I say it? Oh, they're like the these locusts. Yes, locusts are like flying cockroaches kind of, and they make that eat, 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 eat noise yeah. that you hear in the rainforest. Gross. Now, some of them come out like every 10 years, every 13 years, every 17 years, and they like they feed on tree sap, and then they all come out at the same time, and it's like what are they call a locust or whatever. Um Apparently, this, this year in the eastern states, two separate broods. So they've got the every 13-year and the every 17-year matching up on the same year. The last time this happened, Thomas Jefferson was president. It was a while ago, I'm told. So you'll have at least this to live through, Rhett. And that, this is what? A sign of the apocalypse, right? When we have oh, yes. trillions exactly. of cicadas all over the place. Gross. I hate those things. I would move quickly. That's this summer in the eastern United States. Two broods. 
Brood uh, nice 19 brood. and Brood 13. I couldn't read those X's. Yeah, I'm guessing there. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry, folks. Roman numerals, not necessarily what I'm fluent in. From cicadas to snakes. Well, I think it's snakes, or is it one snake? What do we got here? It looks like a snake's oh. eating another snake, but that snake might be. I'd have to agree, right? That did seem to work. You didn't like that, eh? I don't like snakes. I just, uh, they gross me out. One of the How do snakes things, feel about you? One of the few things I'm actually not a fan of. Sanitize your snake. You see it in the comments. Good stuff. Uh, crocodile time. Yeah. Now, I'll give you one guess, Rhett. One guess what happened. <laughs> ah! Florida man. It is a... Uh, from his natty light can. Uh, yeah. I love like it. like that one better? That's beautiful. Yeah, I mean, look. Life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. Alligator bites off your finger, you make uh, alligator tattoo. Beautiful. That is good stuff. I, I honestly, like what a conversation starter, too, at the bar. Love it. <laughs> it's an icebreaker. People love it. Don't what hide happened? it. Draw attention to it. Yeah, what happened to your finger? It's no, self-deprecating, it's right? Fighting an alligator. I lost. It's adorable. People not hiding from their weaknesses, hey? Eh? Brace it. Move on. Uh, golf season around the corner. I know down in Florida where you were what, in full flight already. Masters this weekend. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So there's my ball middle of the fairway. We got one problem though. Oh, I'm look at sure the size of that bastard. Oh my goodness, Jack. Now this is a problem. If you're going to make pinder pork, please start filming in landscape, not profile. Is that it's... Kiowa? Holy, look at the size of that. That's got to be 15 feet. Oh, I've the width that. of the bunker. Huge crock. I think I played that course. How many stroke penalty is that for not playing your ball? I, we got to go to the, uh, the the pros, call the pro from the pro shop, come down and take a look at this. How do I handle this? Yeah, we need a rules official for sure. I'm with you on that. And finally, this one's called Crocodile Revenge, although I think it's Gator, so we'll call it Gator Revenge. Yeah. Oh. So this is apparently common in some of the suburbs down no. by the Everglades. Uh, there. That's a great ride. And there, it's a pathway through, you know, part of the Everglades. This guy's just there. hammering into his phone. And they you can probably pan him down, Jack. Everywhere, and they'll be so on the road. And I this gator has gotten into a neighborhood, so they they're kind of duct taped him up. This one guy's messing with him. They've got the essentially the equivalent of the the zip ties for his his legs. They're not being. And look at this jackass. I, is that what he's doing? He's messing with him, dragging him on his belly. Come on, what are we doing here? I just wondered if he and so they're going to lift this guy into some sort of animal rescue vehicle here. And this poor gator, what's he done? Like, did did he build a house in this suburb, or did they build the suburb in in his backyard? Like, what are we doing here? Oh, bonk! He's coming. Down. <laughs> <laughs> Got him with the tail, rat. Ah! Don't be teasing him. Don't slap him in the face. Bang! Oh. See ya. Good night, Jim K. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Beautiful stuff. You all right? Karma on the Pinder report. You love to see it. Jeez. Got him don't good. Be, don't be teasing animals, eh? That's his face, huh? Yeah, right in the face bone. Right in the face meat. Sorry about that, sir. Don't tease the, the gator. Come on now. Yeah, that's a lot of muscle in there. I feel like they're quite strong. Yeah. Yeah. They don't need a belt to pull the pants up. Okay. I haven't thought about that. Now. That's what I'm talking about. I can't even wear a belt. It's gross. Belts don't work anymore, right? Eh? You're yeah. just constantly tugging it up or what? Yeah. I thought you'd be in shape, come back from Florida. You weren't running on the beach every day? I was staring on the beach. How was the, uh, the were the views? It was, it was great. It was, the oceans were wonderful. Mm-hmm. Everyone was frolicking and enjoying <laughs> splashing about. Yes, right. Yes. Did you? Uh, did you get to the country music festival? I walked down there. Yeah. Uh, it looked. It looked like a fun event. If you were without child, I was going to ask, how are the demographics? It's sounding yeah. younger. 
it did not uh it was i'm sure you could take your kids but uh different type of enjoyment at that point that is fair uh that is your pinder report for village honda a reminder village has got a huge selection of used vehicles all makes all models all budgets with over 90 units on site and access to over 500 more in their dealer group make village honda your one-stop automotive destination in calgary Definitely worth the trip. You can find them in the Northwest Auto Mall and, of course, online at villagehonda.com. I should note, the Vancouver Giants were eliminated in Western Hockey League play. And with that elimination means, I think in the next couple of days, you'll see the arrival of Jordan Lipinski and Samuel Honzik to the Calgary Wranglers. Uh, both Is Honzik players, a special birthday or something? Where they're both weird? late birthdays, in fact, or at least both 19-year-old seasons. So they are eligible to play in the American League next year. That could be it for Honzik and Lipinski at the WHL level. There may be some value putting guys back. I don't know. You'd love to see Honzik dominating and move up a level. He's just been dinged up. It's been a really tough and unfortunate year for him. Doesn't mean he's not going to be a good player, but it's not the type of draft plus one season you'd like a guy to have, given uh, how high you went, the pedigree. Put him back in um, or put him back in June. And you know what? Here's your free look at him, right? Bring him up to see how he looks in practice with these guys. Maybe get him a game or two before the end of the HL's regular season. And if he's way out of his depth, you know, he knows what to do over the offseason. You know where to put him next year. Or if he's like, shit, this guy's, he's huge. He's strong. He can play with men. We'll see. So don't be surprised if you see the Wranglers bringing in Lipinski and Honzik in the coming days. I will imagine a uh, locker clean out today or tomorrow for the Giants. It's going to be a little bit exciting. Future's a little bit closer, potentially. Another couple kids to look at. See More kids days. to look at. Uh, okay. How was the travel? Did you get everyone a seat? Did you get two seats? Did all of your children short, have a seat on the plane? Short, simple flight, easy peasy. Two and a half, you're home. It's good. It's basically like the what you've got out east is our Arizona yep. Palm Springs. Like just 100%. straight south, warm weather, turn off winter, go. Yep. And it, it was it, amazing how many people from here are. Well, it's the same. It's the exact same. The people Snow from. Burns. Yeah. yeah, you're from Calgary, you go to Scottsdale or Palm Springs. You're from northeastern states, you go to Florida or yeah. down into that panhandle somewhere. Yeah. I uh, should also note today that we will hear the WHL announce the exceptional status granted for Landon DuPont, son of Mickey DuPont, okay. a, a Calgary Flame at one point who had a great career over in Europe. And I feel like a guy that in today's NHL would have been a really good NHL defenseman, but just played in the wrong era. He was not as good as water skiing and hooking and holding in the neutral zone as he was at playing hockey, which back then was a detriment. Damn it. I love your skill, but you're, you're not tall. You're too skilled. How the hell can you not be tall, Mick? We're looking for a little more Neanderthal and a little less skill for this slot. On All the this team. skating about. That's right. <laughs> um, do you, do, what do you know about, how well do you know Mickey and what have you heard about the kid? I know Eric Francis wrote an article earlier this year that essentially forecasted this, that he's, he's having that good of a season that he will be allowed uh, exceptional status, which means he can play a full season as a 15 year old in the Western league next year. He's next level. I've seen most O nine age kids play a lot of the, the really good ones. And we got kids down here that think they're really good. And then yeah. it's like, and it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's a different level. He's you can not, fold towels for this guy here. Yeah. <laughs> you don't get to compare yourself because you're not in the same category. So he's and, exceptional, exceptional, exceptional. Yeah. I mean, it's exceptional. Defenseman, 5'11". He's, I, I, I'm getting not fully grown, but certainly has grown a lot. Like he's not going to be 6'4". The old man's not huge, but size may or may not be a big issue at all he, he, but he's rather developed at 15 he's not going to be a boy out there no he's always been a bigger kid i guess like, i don't i didn't watch him that much but i've seen him play I just he, there's not a lot of holes right there's not a lot yeah. of things you think he his edge work is unbelievable unbelievable his skating's unbelievable his stick handling's unbelievable but his brain he sees yeah he just sees the game so well. He just sees it so well. And the exceptional status group is an interesting one. There's some megastars and there's some 
I actually found that like there's only that he's the ninth. Yeah. In history in the CHL. Uh, we we had the tweet a few weeks ago. Let me find it and send it to Jack if you can. Uh, and so this would be what a year older than your eldest or same birth year? Same age. Same age. Same that's age. Why I've so seen you would have seen him a bit here in Calgary before you moved to Buffalo. Yeah, that's why I've seen all the kids that are in his same age group. Right. And they just, I actually, loser dad, I watched the U.S. Nationals 2009 age group, that Landon's age group. The final was yesterday. How, who was so the Hey. Who are the teams? Uh, two co- schools down here. Uh, Mount St. Charles won. They beat Shattuck St. Mary's. So. Wow. Yeah. And where's that school from? Mounts near Boston. Okay. Yeah. Very good school too. Big hockey program. I forget what I was getting at, but you see the best players out there and, and Landon would just, he would, it, it, it'd be it's boring. Him. It'd be boring for him. Is that good? Eh? Wow. Is that good? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Uh, I'm going to read you the Francis tweet here. Um, I've just got to find it as we uh, scroll through here. Da, da, da. Hockey Canada and the Western League will formally announce the granting of exceptional status to 14 year old Calgarian Landon DuPont on Monday. This is from last week. Ninth player in CHL history, second in the dub. Only Connor Bedard has been granted the exceptional status in the WHL. The other players that uh, were prior, Connor McDavid, makes sense, megastar. John Tavares, makes sense, star. Aaron Ekblad, again, not a superstar, but a star. Shane Wright, we'll see. Weird draft class. He kind of got, not kind of, he really got screwed by COVID. He didn't play in his draft year, a game. Uh, the O kept saying they were going to start and they never did. He got screwed badly there. You feel for him. He's just been called up by Seattle from Coachella Valley. Joe Valeno, who definitely plays in the league for, I believe, the Wings, a guy. And then uh, Sean Day and Michael Misa. Misa is not draft eligible till next year. I don't know a ton about Sean Day, but I imagine also younger there. So superstars mixed in with an average Joe, so to speak, not to crack on Joe Valeno, but he's not a superstar. No, and I, uh, I don't know. I, Weird you list. Don't need, you, don't need, you don't need to change the age groups, I guess, but everything's getting younger. Every kid's getting better, younger and younger. I mm-hmm. thought I saw something in the league where before COVID, the average age was like 29, and now it's like 27 or in something. In the NHL. Yeah, yeah. Like it just I believe feels, that. Yeah. yeah, it just feels younger and younger all the time. So Joe Valeno ended up getting drafted 30th overall in 2018 from exceptional status. That's that's a very you're one of the best 30 players on earth. You're 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 drafted. That's very well, impressive. You probably didn't need to go up. Oh, in hindsight, no. And look, maybe he was a man amongst boys, and it made sense at the time, but he didn't prove to be um, a star NHL. The anyway, trajectory so, didn't continue. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's fair. And someone in the comments is saying Sean Day is a bust. I don't know that. Uh, that's accurate or fair. It might be hundred percent accurate. Let's take a look where he's at and where he's playing. This is part of the problem too, though. And we're all completely talking about something that's probably boring for 99% Maybe. of the people there is that everyone tries to push. And I'm not saying Landon shouldn't, uh, he is that good. Yeah. And the Western but league doesn't do this make, very often. Yeah. yeah. Let's not make a habit of this. Like if you're right. going to have kids that end up being drafted 30th, they don't need to move up. Yeah. Yeah, and there's going to be circumstances where, look, uh, development isn't linear. There's there's hiccups. There are guys that peak early and never become great pros. You, we see it all the time. I remember my, the year that uh, my age group was at the Bantam draft, it was Justin Mapletoff, who was an exceptional young player, but never really an NHLer. That happens. Uh, and then the Sean Day went third round, 81st overall in 2016, and he's currently in the American League. Like It's just a guy. Which is still very good at hockey, just yeah, not yeah. a superstar in the NHL. Yeah. Neither here nor there. Uh, I want to tell you about outdoor dental. I went to see Dr. Jay Patel down by the South Health Campus at Outdoor Dental. You can find out more about their, their clinic, their location at outdoor.dental. And I had uh, two 15 minute treatments done on the soft palate in the back of my yap. Why? Well, because uh, not unlike many of us, I, uh, I snore now and then, Rhett. And uh, there we are at Outdoor Dental. I'm playing the video games in the waiting better. room. Look at the hair. Jesus. I did that for a while. Eh? And uh, the lasers, 15-minute treatment. They spray a little 
topical thing on there, pain free, watch TV, lay back. And next thing you know, snoring significantly reduced to the point where my wife says it's disturbingly different that the person next to her is making so much less noise than I was prior. So if you are interested in that treatment or any other dental stuff, outdoor.dental is a place to go. Dr. J's the man. Say hi to him. Let him know you heard it here on the barn burner. And yes, it's not just for you and the better quality of sleep you're going to get, but if there's someone next to you, you won't have this issue in your one bedroom apartment in Florida, Rhett, but I still would advise you to get the procedure done for your own benefits. Health for your health. That's right. Sleep's important. Hey, so they say, yeah, I slept till nine 30 today and it was wonderful. I keep telling my wife that when she says, Ryan, get out of bed. The boys have to be in school in 30 minutes. I'm like, babe, sleep is very good for you. School. Why are you stomping on my health like this? Yeah, clearly you don't care about my health, honey. <laughs> huh? Don't you care about my health? Or just go to bed sooner, you dumbass. That's probably what she said back in some sort oh, of Australian accent. Add against you then. You just say yeah. my circadian rhythm doesn't allow it. The what rhythm? Yeah, that's right. Cicadas? Cicadas, the root? <laughs> yeah, the damn locusts. The locust, my locust rhythm is off, babe. I need more sleep. Outdoor.dental for more information. All things dental, but yes, also on top of all things dental, the uh, the snore treatment. Gotta love that. Right on. Thanks, Dr. J. Uh, Betway, we got some bangers today. We talked about a couple of the games on the slate, and there's only two in the NHL. So why don't we see where we're at? Betway, our gaming partner, Bet the Responsible Way, with Betway, Jacko. Let's take a peek at what I've got today for our Betway bets of the day. Boodle-loop. Oh, Jackie. Oh, Jackie boy. Now listen, these are not probable events. When you see a plus by the odds, that means, well, it's not as likely to happen as it is to not happen. But if one of these two things happen tonight, Rhett, I'm in great shape. I'm going to take the Penguins in a must win in Toronto in a spot where I don't know how hungry Toronto is. They're kind of feel stuck at three a little bit. And look, Pittsburgh's been great. It's not just about, oh, this team's not good. The other team's better. Pittsburgh's rolling right now. They're feeling good. Melkin back from the dead, as Frank noted. He and Crosby each had two. I think Kyle Dubas might have, uh, if they get in, he might have won that Gensel deal. Bunting at the big game winner on Saturday against Tampa Jack. I've got a Pittsburgh regulation victory plus two hunt. Talk to me, Jack. You like I that, like right? that. Oh, yeah, I love it. Now, the night game, Vegas limps into Vancouver. They've got health issues in net. Uh, it sounds like Thomas Hurdle may be ready to return and play. I still like Vancouver at home. They've been just okay lately, but Vegas is limping in with injuries. Plus 190 for Vancouver to cover the puck line. That's minus one and a half, not the money line, which is just a win. I want them to win by two or more. This can be a one-goal game with an empty netter, or maybe the Canucks just absolutely destroy uh, the Golden Knights with mediocre goaltending tonight. We'll see. One of these two hits, I'm in great shape, Red. Really good shape. Get them both, Bender. Let's go! Now, you know my boy Jack on a game day is not going to whiff on a chance to put a little wager down on the Pinguino. Let's see what he's done. You've got another big parlay here. Oh, my God. Plus 1,000. Big game hunting! Big game hunting. Loves Penguins the parlays. to win. Pens win. Over six and a half goals. Yep. And Melkin to score. Like you said, Melkin's been hot the last three, four goals. Michael Bunting has brought him to life. Ooh, Bunting's unlocked Melkin. Who knew? Yes, he has. Okay. So Penguins win over six and a half and Melkin to score plus 1,000. I like all those. It doesn't feel like low scoring with these two teams. Uh, Nadelkovich has come in and had the cape on for the Penguins. Toronto's net mining has been very spotty this year. I like the over. I love Melkin hot. I like Pens to win. Jack, you're a genius. Or he'll go 0 for 3. Find out tomorrow on Barn Burner. Now, here's the deal with Betway. If you've been thinking about maybe putting a little cash into a Betway account to have some fun, now's the time to do it. You can join the action by scanning that QR code on your screen. Why would you do that? Well, that will allow you to claim a bonus and a damn good one. You can get a free bet of up to $200 if your first bet loses. Create a new account, scan that QR code, redeem your bonus, then place a bet, no minimum amount required. If that bet loses, you'll get a refund of up to $200. You can then use that money to bet more on your other favorite sports, the same favorite sports, the next Penguins game, whatever it is, 
Offer only available outside of Ontario. Scan that QR code for more. Thanks. That way. Two good games, Red. They will be good. I don't know if I could stay up that late out here. That's Well, and I've got some earlier stuff for you as well. And we also have the men's tournament. We've got baseball. Let's get right into it with our DoorDash. What's on the menu? Here's the thing about DoorDash, Red. It's not just restaurants. It's pharmacies, grocery stores, flower shops, whatever you need. DoorDash has got you and will deliver it right to your door with their default contactless delivery. Ordering is easy. Open the app. Choose what you want from where you want. It's a beauty. Now, even better than that. Oh, you're muted, but I see you trying to talk. No, I'm not. Okay, sorry. DoorDash is really good at delivering stinger subs at 10 o'clock on Saturday nights. Really? On a travel day back from Florida even? Got on the couch. I was going to watch my nephew play trail. Yeah. Big playoff game. A little okay. snacky. Where are they at? Did they get the split in Vernon? Did not. They were <sighs> tied 0-0. Zero, zero. Power play in the th late in the third game oh, one. Boys, come on. Shorthanded against. Oh, backbreaker. And then 1-1 then, one, one in the third in game two. Give up a four banger. Oh, dear. Ooh. Well, that was a Penguins on a Ginla night type collapse. Hey, eh, Jack. Wow. Yeah. Geez. They'll go back to trail, though. That, that old rink will be bumping. They got the brewery in the corner they put in. I hear Can it's I go? an awesome rink. Absolutely, you should go. It's hard to get to, though. It you is. Might have to Maybe fly game to six. Give yourself a little time. You'll have to fly to Spokane and drive up. Whew. You can get to Cranbrook through Calgary, yeah, or Vancouver, yeah, but then even get to Calgary, you need two flights from Buffalo. You're in trouble there from Buffalo, man. You need to live in a better airport city. No, I could drive to Toronto and then fly back. Then. You're looking at two flights and two drives. That, that, is, that is not the setup. It's a heavy day. Not the setup. Uh, if you have not used DoorDash, if you are new to DoorDash, download the app and on your first order, enter promo code NATION25 and you'll get 25% off and zero delivery fees on your first order of more than $15. Get the app, enter promo code NATION25 for that. Dash that for the win. Rhett, I got four for you tonight. You're going to be busy, but you've got multiple screens. And if you're not off halfway through the last game of the night, I'm okay with it because there's been a lot. I need you to really buckle up for tonight. Five o'clock, Penguins in Toronto. 5.07, Mariners in Toronto. The Blue Jays are finally home after a miserable 10-game road trip oh. to start the season. What if I just drove up there? And just... Oh, you should go to the game. Oh, my God, you should go to the game. And Luis Castillo's pitching. He was the jerk that pitched there in the wild card game. Very, very good at baseball. Having a tough two starts of the year. Castillo back in. Uh, for the Jays, it should be Jose Barrios. On the what a terrible day to start your home Monday Come against on, Seattle. Mm. Eat it. I'm not going. Seven twenty. Purdue, Connecticut, oh. men's final four, the NCAA collegiate championship tonight. Are you a boilermaker or a husky? Or are you a husky I love boilermaker? boilermakers? They're great drinks that keep me up. And yes, uh, I hate dogs. This is a fat guy matchup. You get the boilers on one side and you get the huskies on the other. All right. And finally, the nightcap, eight o'clock, Rhett, will allow you, will excuse you from this one. We'll have someone uh, punch your time card for you. Oh, so it yeah. looks like you watched it. Vegas in Vancouver, eight o'clock puck drop on the left coast. That's what's on the menu. What's on that stinger sub again? Remind us. Chicken fingers, mild, medium, or hot. And then like a chopped steak. Uh, with cheese, blue cheese, mayo. It's the blue cheese sauce that really. Yeah. Blah. Now, it's if you'd so ask me if I want blue cheese sauce on it, I'd say no. But if it's part of the signature, like it has to be, like then yes, obviously. We the have one to. I ordered was the was the Jim's Blue okay. Stinger. Okay. And it was. So there's we're now have, we have different dialects of the Stinger, different yeah, different, different families of the Stingers. Yep. 100%. 100%. And I got to say, I don't want to go back. Whatever the F boom was sinking with his pickles and his fucking cheese whiz. Woo. Get out of here. Wow. Heated. You're with a professional like Frank, and it's you're serious. not going to. What are we talking about? Come on now. When in Rome, Frank Saravalli sitting beside you at his spot. 
telling you how to order. Puts it in order. Yeah. And you go with pickles. It's like, what, you're going to put a ketchup on your hot dog in, in at Wrigley Field? You can't do that. Show a little respect. Weak. That's weak. This week. Frank, I'm surprised Frank just didn't drill him right there. Just Something to talk right about tomorrow. Face. Yeah, it's like, hey, uh, I'm in Buffalo, Rhett. Uh, where should I go for wings? Oh, I should go here. Nah, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to go somewhere else. Yeah, I got to get a chopped salad instead. You're in Buffalo. Wait, 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 what? Come on. Uh, DoorDash, nation code, uh, promo code NATION25 for the 25% off your first order over 15 bucks and free delivery. And there's Double Dash 2, two stops, flower store, pharmacy, front door, same delivery, not an extra delivery charge. It's all there. Download the app. Dash that for the win. Uh, what's the day got for you, sir? What have you got? The, I don't know. The shoveler disappeared, so maybe. Did I you miss the? Did it happen? Did we already miss the eclipse? Did it get dark out there for a moment? It was great. It was so good. I can't believe you didn't notice the lighting go down. I think we're about an hour out. Wow, that was great. Mm. Okay. Uh, I don't know. We're going yeah, to grandma's. Like we're grabbing ice cream, and we're going to sit there and pretend that this is interesting. I'm sorry, I missed it. Mm-hmm. I gotta fly to Romania the next time it comes about. So it'll sure, be yeah, love the Romanians. Check oh. it out then. Sure. Okay, we'll be back tomorrow. We will have uh, Boomer regale us with the tales of WrestleMania in Philadelphia at Lincoln Financial Field, where it was apparently close to freezing. We will have a Flames game tomorrow as they have play one of their two games remaining against the Sharks. Hoof eight thirty start. Oh, yeah. I'll, be, I'll be up for that one. Oh, I'll, for sure you will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a 10.30 Eastern puck drop. 11.30 period two going, 12.15 in the morning period three. Yeah, you'll, you're definitely in for that. Can't wait for Afterburner. It's going to be wicked. We'll, we'll put it, we can live stream you on your couch yeah. falling asleep. You're not cast on Afterburner. We've got different star actors for that one. Mm. Uh, and we will also... Things go right. I have a very special guest. See you I'm tomorrow, buddies. See you tomorrow.